my name is Hannes Jurgens, and I'm happy to give a talk about what we have done here in, in Estonia. Very good. Breast cancer, still major oncological problem in Europe, 2020, and affecting every 11th female in their lifetime, and causing almost 100,000 deaths each year in Europe. Um, incidents still increasing continuously and varies in between countries almost two times and um, causing also deaths. Fortunately, mortality is decreasing. It's believed to happen due to better treatments, but also for better screening programs that reduce the death rate. Distribution of age. Most of the breast cancer cases occur in middle-aged female, but quite a significant portion happens also in elderly people and in younger women. Treatment results are quite good in general in Europe, but there's still a 20% gap between treatment results. It can be different reasons for that, but one of them can be also screening program differences. Breast cancer risk factors. They can be in general divided into categories. Ones that uh, are controllable and the ones that you cannot control, which are age, gender, genes. But the ones you can control, for instance, lack of exercise, obesity, giving birth, breastfeeding, and so forth. And the factors can be also divided on their effect on the risk to, to, to get the cancer. And the strongest factors are genetic, BRCA1, 2, also precancerous changes, and elderly age. Usually, the ones a person can change, those factors have a smaller impact on risk. But there are 17 different ones here named, starting with alcohol consumption until taller height. Genetics, familial risk, inherited component in breast cancer is evaluated to be around 30%. And around 20% could be explained with monogenic mutations. But not only. Polygenic risk scores, for instance, uh, 77 SNP, is believed to give around 14% on the risk. On this slide, there is an example of um, strong gene mutations that very strongly affect the risk of getting cancer, but we are, they are very rare, very seldom. And then here on the right side, there are single nucleated polymorphisms that alone have a small effect, but together in the score could also raise the risk for cancer. In Estonia, in Tartu University, we also created uh, a new score and we used three uh, meta-analysis databases in order to create one. And we validated in Estonian Biobank to find the best fit PRS for our Estonian uh, female. And here's the performance of this um, score. We can see that it quite well discriminate different risk levels. And in, in top 5%, the risk to have breast cancer is 2.7 times higher than the average. So one, once a person knows that he, he or she has a high risk, would also like to know what can be done. Very widely used is secondary prevention. 
screening mammography programs are used for many, many years already. And it's proved that they can reduce death rates. Also screening MRI is effective to reduce breast cancer deaths, but for only those who belong to really high risk category. But primary pre prevention, not to get the cancer, that applies for every female, is to modify those factors that can be modified. It's health style, lifestyle question. And with that, you could even win up to 25% reduction in, in risk. And for higher risk pay, uh, ladies, there are also option to use chemo prevention and surgical prevention, but it's the, which is the highly efficient way to reduce, to really prevent the cancer. But of course, budget psychologically, it's, it's the most difficult one to take. So what's the current situation in Estonia now? We have age-based biennial mammography screening program for 50 to 69 year old ladies. Participation rate, rate is around 50, 55%, which is not so good. Yet we detect 0.5% screening mammographies, the cancer rate, and this cover around 25% of all breast cancers with the screening program. As we see that there is a really room for improvement. And it's uh, been proposed that instead of age-based screening, we should move forward to risk-based screening and the risk should be individually assessed and to help to, to improve the screening program. In Europe, there is a large phase three trial currently recruiting patients that address this question. They, they look at different risk levels and whether the screening could be modified according to higher risk or lower risk. And similar trial is also going on in US called Wisdom. The results are expected 2023 or even later. Meanwhile, here in Estonia, three years ago, um, a consortium, Espermed, was created in order to, to develop personalized medicine in, in Estonia. And two pilot projects were initiated. One of them was about breast cancer and another one, cardiovascular diseases. And I'm happy to pre present you some of the results of the pilot one about breast cancer prevention using genetics. In principle, it was a feasibility study to see whether people accept the genetic risk information and, uh, and how the polygenic risk score is working. And we used also the moderate and high hereditary breast cancer risk carriers with monogenic mutations and high polygenic risk carriers among healthy individuals. We had this trial in uh, two largest hospitals in, in Estonia. We had a study team, including two geneticists and 10 oncologists. And many good colleagues from Tartu University helping us in different aspects. So here's the flowchart and time scale. 2018, we started. Estonian Biobank gene donors, female. We divided them in two cohorts. One of them was mutational cohort. Those ladies, we asked to come directed to geneticists. And after geneticists, they went to see their oncologist. And oncology, oncologists are those who follow them according to the guidelines as long as it's needed. 
and the other group, the higher group was the PRS group, where we picked up top 5% highest score ladies and invited them to oncologists to give feedback, to perform a physical checkup and uh, give advice for future. More than 1,000 ladies were involved in this trial. And the results. In polygenic risk scores group, participation rate 52%. And mean age, 56 years. We also looked at additional risk factors for, risk, for breast cancer. And we found that 70% of ladies had at least one additional risk factor to high polygenic risk. And the mutational group particip participation rate was a bit better. They were a bit younger and they had slightly more additional risk factors to their monogenic mutation. So what did we find in polygenic risk core cohort? Cancers, of course, this is the purpose of the screening program. We found 10 cancers, 1.12%. We found that 70% of them were out of screening program age. They were all localized, mainly first A, first B stage. And we found that um, breast cancers were more prevalent among those who had two risk factors in addition to high polygenic risk. And their scores were 97 to 99 mostly. And so the cancer detection rate in general in screening programs is 0.5. In our pilot, it was 1.12, more than two times higher. In mutational cohort, we found that 50% of them had had already some kind of cancer. Three of them had breast cancer in younger age. And also during the oncology visits, we found four breast cancers due to the trial. And 75% of them were found on ladies who were outside screening program, younger age. One case bilateral breast cancer, one case during pregnancy before age 40. And we also looked at family history. Currently in Estonia also it's, it's possible to um, evaluate for monogenic mutations when you fill certain criteria. And so health insurance will cover it. But only one third of ladies who were carriers of uh, high risk mutation they filled that criteria. So we proposed a model how to personalize breast cancer screening in Estonia to enhance broader knowledge of breast cancer risks, prevention and genetics, and to reduce breast cancer mortality. We proposed that uh, genetic information should be involved and screening interventions should start at least 10 years earlier. And the patients, not the patients, but the ladies should be also counseled on health behavior, genetic risks, and to have a personal plan and decision aid. And the main solution what we, we were proposing looks like this. A 40-year young female gets an invitation to screening program that involves genetics. She goes to the patient portal and decides whether she wants to participate or not. She will fill in family history, informed consent, and so forth. And finally reach to the lab to have a gene test and also see the family doctor, general practitioner. And after gene analysis, the ladies can be divided into different groups. They can either be consultated only with digital information or go back to their 
general practitioner and gynecologist. And if there is a monogenic mutation, the patient should also see medical genetists or other specialists who ultimately gave this personal prevention and screening program. We also looked at cost effectiveness, compare it, this proposed model to standard of care currently in Estonia. And the target population we looked at was 40 year old ladies without breast or ovarian cancer diagnosis. In Estonia, we have a small population, it's 8,800 women. And here are the modeled cancer and death cases in target population group. With minus, we can see that 14 cases we could prevent with proposed model. If we would be able to evaluate monogenic mutations in whole population without pre-selection with anamnesis, we could prevent even twice the number of cases. And here we see modal probabilities in women with BRCA mutation. If we use this program, we could see a dramatic decrease in breast cancer incidence and also in ovarian cancer incidence. Similar thing happened in high PRS risk group. It's um, mortality that we modeled and expect to decrease to this program. Here are the costs, different approaches. Uh, we, this is uh, the analysis performed on payer perspective. So we looked at costs, direct costs, and reached up in cost effectiveness analysis of costs, ICER per quality, the scenario that we proposed and you saw, it costs 6,800 euros. In case we would like to test monogenic testing to every female, it would cost much more. And costs and outcomes have been discounted with 5% discount rate. We also look at the sensitivity analysis. What are the main components in, in the price that play the role in cost effectiveness? And we saw that it was the discount rate that played a major role and also cost of rotational testing, which is right now quite high, but in case it would go down up to 100 euro per one test, also the cost effectiveness would be much better. So conclusions. Genetic information that we have today available predicts quite well high risk of getting breast cancer. And we could use it in breast cancer risk evaluation, screening stratification, and intervention planning. Starting breast cancer screening and prevention at 40 years of age, which is 10 years earlier, for high-risk women in Estonia is feasible and apparently cost-effective. Monogenic mutation high-risk genes testing for whole population will come cost-effective soon after genetic testing price falls into appropriate level. And the best and comprehensive result in risk protection still is achieved when we combine both genetic and non-genetic risk factors into one score and personalize preventive measures accordingly. Thank you. Mm -hmm.